Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for Godzilla. Kong, The New Empire, which is the fifth movie in the MonsterVerse, the third to feature Kong, and the fourth to feature Godzilla. It's also the tenth theatrically released Kong movie, and the 38th theatrically released Godzilla movie. That is assuming you count the Roland Emmerich movie, and y'all know how I feel about that. This movie takes place three years after the events of the last one, where Godzilla and Kong team up to fight Mechagodzilla. Kong now resides in Hollow Earth, whereas Godzilla stays on the surface, and they pretty much stay in their own territories. However, there are strange occurrences happening in Hollow Earth, which results in Kong discovering more of his own kind, including the villainous and terrifying Scar King. Godzilla is also aware of something happening on the surface world, so it's only a matter of time before these two monsters eventually have to team up again to save their respective worlds. Out of all the movies being released in 2024, this one was my most anticipated one just by virtue of the fact that it was another Godzilla movie. And yes, I understand that we do have Godzilla Minus One, which just came out four months ago, or five if you live in Japan, but that's a very different movie compared to what the MonsterVerse has established to be. And I already made a big video about that topic already. So I was ready to enjoy this movie for what it was, because the trailers had sold me on it being a simple monster mash and I got to admit right now this is my least favorite of all the MonsterVerse movies. Even something like Godzilla King of the Monsters which everyone cites as the weakest of the bunch I would take that over Godzilla Kong the New Empire. And the biggest problem I have with this movie, just to get it out of the way right now, is that it takes a long time to get things going. There's a lot of setup to the conflict, to Scar King and his past, and to why Godzilla and Kong have to team up to fight this common enemy. Like with Godzilla vs. Kong, this movie is under two hours, which is appropriate length for a monster movie, but because it's so short, and because there's so much time to set up everything that we need to know going into the last half, it feels like not a lot is committed to the film's characters. And I'm not talking about the human characters, because they really don't matter. They're mainly there just to drive the plot along. No, I'm talking about the monster characters. I'm talking about Kong. I'm talking about Godzilla. Uh, especially with Godzilla himself. He almost feels like an afterthought in this movie. Uh, there are scenes with him throughout the first half, uh, but they're very short and very spread throughout everything, uh, considering that the movie also has to focus on Kong, and the movie also has to focus on the human characters. And I almost felt like, considering how underutilized he is in the first half of the movie, you probably could have done this as a straight-up Kong movie without Godzilla, because that's what it essentially is. The focus, like with the last movie, is more on Kong this time around. But even then, with Godzilla vs. Kong, even though Kong was the main monster star, it did feel like a natural sequel to Godzilla King of the Monsters. This time around, it feels like Godzilla was tacked on just for marketing purposes, and the fact that it's Godzilla. Now, everything with Kong, on the other hand, is very well done. There are many sequences where it's just him with no humans and no dialogue, and you really get a sense of his story, what he's feeling. He's such an expressive character, and I feel like more than anyone else in this movie, he's the heart of the film. And he's such a stark contrast compared to the villain of the film, the Scar King. Because while Kong is depicted as somebody who's very noble, he's caring, but he also doesn't take Take shit from anyone. Scar King is ruthless, he's cruel, and he's just an all-around bully. And when the two of them first meet up, all of the other apes fear Scar King to their bitter core, except Kong. Kong is just standing in place going, you don't scare me, you anorexic balding orangutan. Uh, yeah, I've called Scar King that several times, but to be totally honest, I think he's an effective villain. Yeah, he may not look as imposing as Kong or Godzilla, but the fact that so many of the other apes around him are terrified of Scar King, and just his overall design is just creepy and unsettling, he makes for a threatening enough villain. And I won't say much about the other titan of the movie, Shimo, because I feel like the less you know about this particular titan, the better off you are. I suppose I'll talk about the human characters, because like I said earlier, they're mainly there just to drive the plot along. However, there is an attempt at a story between Kaylee Hotto's Gia 
and Rebecca Hall's Dr. Andrews uh, because Gia is trying to struggle with the fact that she doesn't belong on the surface world. Uh, and the journey that these people take to Hollow Earth can really lend itself to some interesting character development. Uh, it could have been a very heartfelt story about this young girl uh, just struggling to find her way and how her surrogate mother is trying to deal with it. But unfortunately, the movie doesn't really have the time to focus on all those elements. And the time that it does have, it's maybe like one or two scenes and then a quick wrap up at the very end. That's it. In terms of the actors, everyone does a good job. It's just their characters are not all that interesting. Rebecca Hall and Kaylee Hoddle are just as good as they were in Godzilla vs. Kong. Brian Tyree Henry is probably less annoying in this movie than he was in Godzilla vs. Kong, but I still see no reason for this character to even be in the movie. Although I gotta say, and maybe you could call spoilers all you want, but I'm really grateful that he's not hired by Monarch after the events of the last movie. He's still the crazy conspiracy theorist podcaster that he was before, but again, I wish he was just not in this movie. Dan Stevens, on the other hand, is a vast improvement over Alexander Skarsgård from the last movie, who I thought was a complete bore, but Dan Stevens is chewing up scenery in every moment that he has on screen. He's a ton of fun to watch, and it feels like he knows the type of movie that he's in. As good as I think Rebecca Hall is, she's definitely taking this movie a little more seriously than Dan Stevens is, and he's just having a blast. And speaking of blast, all the action scenes are very well done. There's a ton of monster carnage throughout this movie, mostly, again, involving Kong, but once we get to the big finale at the end where it's Godzilla and Kong versus Scar King and Shimu, it is fun. It is so creative. It's so over the top. And it definitely feels like Adam Wingard was trying to make a late Showa era type movie like Godzilla vs. Megalon. Um, I won't say much more beyond that. Although I do have to admit there are points in the movie where the action is very shoddy and close up that it reminded me of Godzilla King of the Monsters. So I personally prefer the action in Godzilla vs. Kong just because it's shot with more clarity and from wide angles so you can see everything that's happening. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm very mixed on this movie. Uh, I've watched all the MonsterVerse movies in theaters, and every time I initially see them, I come out feeling conflicted. Uh, upon watching each movie a second time, I grow to appreciate them a lot more, so I'm curious to see if the same will happen with Godzilla Kong The New Empire. But as of right now, I gotta say, watch at your own risk. The movie is undoubtedly entertaining. You'll get your share of monster carnage, even more so than what the trailers showed us. And I think the best parts of the film when there aren't monsters fighting is whenever we're focused on Kong and his story. But everything else in that first half is just not really worth it in my opinion. When it's not focused on Kong, it spends a little too much time on the humans who are not interesting, and Godzilla is sporadically scattered throughout that first half. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this movie at the end of the day. I am curious to see how my opinion will change, if it does, on a second viewing, and admittedly curious to see where the future of this series goes, because the ending definitely leaves the door open for more possibilities, and I enjoy hanging out in the MonsterVerse for about two hours or longer if it's Monarch Legacy of Monsters, but this movie right here didn't really work for me. And there you go, that's my review for Godzilla Kong The New Empire. Now I won't be doing a spoiler review for this movie. I know that might sound disappointing for some of you, but to be honest, there's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of spoilers. There is one element to be sure, but I feel like it's just not worth dedicating an entire video to that one thing that they didn't spoil in the trailers. But, like I did with the other Godzilla movies and the other MonsterVerse films, I will be holding a live watch party for this movie when it comes out on Blu-ray. Because I know you guys enjoy these live watch parties, especially if they're Godzilla related. And this one will happen a lot sooner than with Godzilla Minus One, because we don't know when Minus One's coming out on Blu-ray, but I imagine Godzilla Kong The New Empire will be on Blu-ray at least by the end of the summer, so keep your eyes open for that. 
But until then, I want to know what you guys think about Godzilla Kong The New Empire. Whatever your opinions are, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. If you want to find me elsewhere on YouTube, you can check out my theme park and travel channel, Alexander Robinson Travel Channel, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.